Good morning and welcome to the United in Christ Lutheran Parish. We begin our service this morning with the confession and forgiveness of sins. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of our Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let's pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you that, loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the night of his arrest, Jesus delivers a final testimony to his disciples to help them in the days ahead. Here, Jesus repeats the most important of all his commands, that they love one another. Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. A member of a congregation who was known to be angry and upset at a whole lot of things was leaving worship one Sunday morning. As she greeted the pastor at the door, she said, I'm so glad, pastor, that you preached a historical sermon this morning. The pastor was kind of surprised and shocked at this unusual praise from this person. The parishioner continued, I'm so glad you preached a historical sermon this morning, pastor, because I'm sick and tired of hearing about love all the time. It must really be difficult to be a Christian, if you have a problem with the love thing. In fact, if that's your problem, if you have a problem, if you're sick and tired of hearing about love all the time, you might want to ignore Jesus' words to us this morning. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. The word abide... It's not a word that we use very often today when we're speaking or communicating with other people. We don't often say to others, where do you abide? You'll likely come across the word more times while reading the Gospel of John than you ever will in everyday conversation. In fact, if you read just the first 11 verses of John chapter 15, 
you'll find Jesus uses the word abide 11 times. In just the first 11 verses. And in Bible study, we learn that when a word is repeated over and over, we ought to pay attention to it. It reminds us how important it is in the Gospel of John. Think back to the first chapter of John, verses we often hear around Christmas. John 1.14, And the Word became flesh and lived among us. That Greek word means the Word dwelt among us like in a tent. The word pitched a tent or camped out among us. It shows us how God's love is present. And in the life of Jesus, God's love walked and talked among the people. The disciples had been following Jesus for three years at this point. And in the passage we heard a few minutes ago, Jesus is teaching his disciples how to walk in those shoes. Especially when he will no longer be physically present with them. Ascension Day, which is 40 days after Easter, will be this Thursday, May 13th. Jesus is preparing his disciples, his followers, to continue to dwell in that same love. So this follows a couple chapters after Jesus had washed the feet of his disciples. That happened in the 13th chapter of John's Gospel. And he speaks these words to his disciples on the same evening he's about to go out into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, where he will be arrested. Jesus is trying to prepare the disciples for his absence. And Jesus wants to instruct them on how to continue to live into the ministry he began. Even when they can no longer see him, So Jesus says to the disciples, abide in my love. Make my love the house. Make my love the tent, the shelter in which you dwell and move around in. So that word that Jesus uses, abide, you can also translate it as remain or Stay. And after the year we have had during this COVID-19 pandemic, we're very familiar with the words remain or stay. Because after a year of lockdown, of quarantine, of social distancing, we know what it means to remain to shelter in place, to stay. Oh, we've become very familiar with what the inside walls of our homes look like, especially these last 14 or 15 months. We've had time to think about the kind of place we want to shelter in. I bet maybe your priorities have shifted Maybe what's important to you and your family have become clearer. Maybe it's caused you to change things in small and large ways. Think about many people who have moved this past year. Some moved out of crowded cities in search of a quieter, slower pace of life and a little more space. Some moved closer to family 
or closer to wherever feels like home. Some have moved back into the homes they grew up in with mom and dad. We've had more than a little time to think about what kind of home we want and need to abide in. Maybe you've converted a bedroom into a home office. Or maybe your kitchen table became the place where your son or daughter went to school. Or maybe you've been faced with all the demands that your home has been placed in this past year. I wonder if we don't have a greater sense of what that word abide means. The importance of home, the place where we dwell, and how we live. To listen to Jesus' words this morning is to be reminded that our homes reflect our priorities and our home base affects how we live our lives. So this morning, Jesus invites you and me to abide in his love. It's like Jesus is saying to you and me, let my love be the foundation under your feet. Let my love permeate the walls that shelter you. Let my love form the roof arching over your head. So Jesus' encouragement to us this morning is not just to rest in God's love, but I think also to live our lives in such a way that reflects that love built the house we live in. The love of God made known in Jesus our Savior. The disciples, you remember, hid away in a locked room for a while before they ventured out to share the good news and carry on Jesus' ministry. Abiding in the love of Jesus wasn't just about a physical space where they lived, but it was about how they lived their lives with other people. The home you and I have in the love of Jesus. It's a home that goes with us wherever we go, like a tent. And it shows up when we remember God's love for us and when we treat others as people loved by our Savior, Jesus Christ. The home we have in the love of Jesus shows up when we create a loving space to really listen to someone else, to be present with them when they are in need, when they are struggling. That space is a home built by the love of Jesus Christ, our Savior. For that home we have in the love of Jesus shows up when we contribute to building a shelter for those that have no home. That effort creates a space for love to dwell. The home we have in the love of Jesus shows up when we show kindness and love to others. The love and home we have in the love of Jesus shows up when we respond graciously, even to someone who may disagree with us. The home we have in the love of Jesus shows up in the ways large and small when we allow the love of God to guide us 
to guide our thoughts, to guide our speech, to guide our actions. It was the Danish philosopher Soren Kierkegaard who said, Christianity is not a doctrine to be taught, but a life to be lived. Christianity is not a doctrine to be taught, but a life to be lived. As Jesus said to his disciples, as Jesus says to you and me today, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. So just as we have learned to stay and remain the past 14 or 15 months, I hope that you and I also learn to abide to make our foundation in God's ever-present love made known to us in Jesus, our Savior. Love where we can dwell forever and where joy is full. Amen. So let's join in singing a song that probably talked about Jesus' love when we were really little. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me, This I Know. Let's confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Loving God, you call us to be your fruit-bearing church. Strengthen the bonds among all Christian churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, the earth praises you. The seas roar and the hills sing for joy. Fill the earth with your love so that by their song all creatures of land, sea, and sky, burrowing and soaring, may call us to join them with praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful Savior, you conquer the world not with weapons, but with undying love. Plant your word in the hearts of the nation's leaders and give them your spirit so that the peoples of the world may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring healer, you forget no one and accompany the lonely. Be present with those who are sick or suffering. We especially remember this morning the family, family and friends of Travis Imamura, Irv Tasted, Darlene Gast, Bob Norlin, and Blade Halverson. Lord, we ask that you would reach out a healing hand upon Luann Vanderberg, Patricia Gustafson, Levi Qualley, Deanne Larson, Stephen Jacobson, Linda Cornelison, Butch Olson, Celia Gertson, Chris Meldy, Molly Van Arum, Gwen Sorensen, Myrna Moore, Chelsea Klinger, Rodney Rolland, Rory Hamry, and Percy Miranda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as a mother comforts her child, you comfort us. Bless mothers and mothering people in our lives. Comfort those who miss their mothers, mothers who grieve, those who grieve because they cannot be mothers, and those who have never known a loving mother. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we pray raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take this and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus strengthen you and give you peace. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.